Hello everyone and welcome back to X-Plane 12. The Kolimata Concorde has been updated for this version of X-Plane and I am going to test it out. I enjoyed flying it in X-Plane 11. I think it's the best Concorde that I've ever flown in a flight sim. And so hopefully it will continue that here. And the upgrade cost was $11 to me. So it isn't a free upgrade for X-Plane 12, but for those who purchased it for X-Plane 11, it's $11. So we will see whether everything is working out okay. I'm going to take off from Miami and try to land at JFK. Yeah, so we'll put it through its normal paces. And yeah, we'll start without engines running and I'll try to do the full startup procedure. I probably won't show everything, but I'll just report how everything went. And so yeah, uh, we, uh, I'll put some more payload weight just for the heck of it, just for realism's sake and we, we don't, we're not going very far. I'll put a fair amount of fuel in just for takeoff purposes to see how well it takes off like that. And uh, we will use customize here and we'll start on a ramp. This one seems convenient. I, I don't know exactly what the gates are at Miami. Um, maybe this is okay. All right, let's try that. Okay, here we are in the cockpit. We have the UI stuff and various presets for the view in the bottom left-hand corner as we did in X-Plane 11. And I'll start off by connecting the GPU. And we will get the checklist out. We'll start with preliminary cockpit. And so I've got the ground power on. That was GPU. The main batteries are on the engineer panel. And I'm going to click there. And they are here. Okay, equipment bay cooling. I, I don't know what to say it to. Um, it is here, equipment bay cooling. I'm just going to set it to auto and that to norm. Oh, well, maybe on is nice. Okay, but I mean, uh, anytime when the lights turn off, that's good. You want the lights to be off anyway. Okay, oxygen panel. That's down here. And I don't see any warning lights. Okay, we'll start the INSs. So that's number one align, number two align, number three align, and they're all blinking. Okay, and then the air data computer is over here on, on, and emergency equipment check, and then the smoking and fasten seatbelt are up there. Okay, next. So, the control inverters are at the top there, but this is a bad angle, so let's go for this one. Oh, drain, drain mass headers. Um, heaters, not headers, heaters. Okay, control invert, all these things. Artificial fuel, electric trim, auto stabilization. The inverters seem to be on already, and, but the anti-stall system, the RADS int is on RAD, and that is true for both sides, and instrument transfer is fine. Okay, so altimeter, I'll set it to zero, just on a convenience thing. And we should probably have those match. I mean, we're probably below sea level, but audio panel com one. Oh, it's over there, right? Oop. Okay, audio panel com one on, and nav lights. Throttle masters, main or all turn. Well, they're on main, I think. Let me just, yeah, main. Okay, ground hydraulic checkout, yellow. Uh, I need the engineer panel for that. Ground hide, oh, that's up there. Uh, yellow, yellow, I think that's fine. Okay, fuel heaters auto. Engine recircula recirculation valves shut, yes. 
and secondary air doors will set for reheat so auto oops auto 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 okay batteries are on um, the INS is still blinking so we'll, we'll wait on that stuff okay door lights check master warning test we can do the master warning test that's all the light tests okay anti-collision lights on throttles are idle engine feed pumps here we go engine feed pumps on 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 lead air sources available that's the GPU that we've got connected um, cross bleed open 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 bleed air valves open 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 increasing we gotta keep engine debo as it is where was that engine debo is on normal there it's right under the start valves and we gotta start number two first so I think we're ready to start ground power is as available okay so I'm gonna start two first I forget what the order is I'm gonna do two three one four okay and when N2 is past that we click that and it should the blinking light should turn off at 30 on the N2 it does so that's okay so we've got one engine and then once the start thing flicks to off I'll start the next one okay lighting number three that isn't working well clearly I've forgotten something for engine three but in theory I've done everything for all the engines in parallel okay well we, we only seem to be able to get one engine on oh wait engine one is coming on so engine one and two can start apparently oh these these feeds are off ah I didn't turn all the feeds on that's why okay we, we didn't have the engine feed pump on okay 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 I only turned half of them on <laughs> great all right problem solved now you might wonder about the fact that I'm whoop, it's loud out here uh, I'm lighting all the engines at the gate instead of having to push back first but at, at least we need two engines before we dis disconnect from ground power so yeah that is why we're starting at the gate okay last engine not the order I wanted them in but it is the order I got them in and click that waiting for the last light all right all the lights are off so now we can turn all the cross bleeds off uh, those on those lights are all off and the uh, generators and the uh, hydraulics okay and then we can uh, get the ground power off ground power is off okay SSB is closed emergency hydraulic gen uh, ground bypass not ground grid bypass I think it was already fine, but anyway. Shed galley gen one through four. That is here on on. Water heater on. Icy lights as required. Uh, ground equipment clear. Push back when ready. Okay, well I'm gonna tell them to push back. I have a key for that. Hopefully. No pushback service available. Now they've said that before and then they started pushing back anyway. So I'm just gonna wait for that. 
Let me go back to the front. Let me peruse the back to see if there's any lights. There are no lights except... Oh, that's probably okay. Nav-wise though, I don't think the INS has our coordinates right. <laughs> I hope that happens. I tried to do it properly, but I always get the INS wrong. Oh, I hear the, the truck. Commencing pushback. Release See? parking brake. Okay, releasing parking brake. Parking brake. Okay. We are uh, pushing back here. Uh, let me get back in and the nose. Oh, uh, do I dare use the ATC around here? VFR de departure, I guess. That's what we're going for. Trying to northeast. What is all that business? Okay, stop pushback. If that's supposed to be the way we're taxiing, that's... Okay, now it's adjusted. All right, so we've got a taxi ribbon. That's nice. Lots of creaking. Well, that creaking is probably XP realistic. Let me just disable that. Oh, okay. All that noise was XP realistic. Uh, we will avoid XP realistic. So this is what the mod actually sounds like right now. Though the ambience was pretty good. I, I like the ambience, but uh, we'll give a accurate feel of things Charlie, squad two, oh, six, okay we're clear for takeoff okay folks here we go uh engine four is slow to throttle up is that normal The sound is a little bit underwhelming right now. Okay, it was slow, but it's there. Okay, rotating. Or attempting to. Okay, well, we have positive climb. Gear up. Whoa, whoa. Oh, keep positive climb, please. It's leaning to the left a bit. Well, that is Miami. Miami's not looking too bad. Okay, flight engineer for flight, I suppose. Oh, plenty of frame rates. Let's see how the autopilot deals with this situation. Ah, it lit the afterburner. Uh, it doesn't need to light the afterburner there. And it's not holding the vertical speed I was looking for. Okay, climbing to 35,000. I'm letting the autopilot handle the auto throttle. I'm handling the heading right now. It's not quite matching the vertical speed setting that I've set, but maybe it'll get to it. And this is how we look turning. the exter exterior view of the model.
Okay, okay. Now, now we've got it holding the heading. All is well. Ah, uh, the poor little Alpa keeps flicking on the afterburner every now and again. But anyway, we'll be doing the whole breaking Mach 1 thing momentarily. As we level out at 35,000 here. Okay, you may now use the afterburner autopilot. Our location is currently here, off the coast of Florida. Can't really enjoy the scenery. All right, we have, and we got significant drag as we pass Mach One. Of course, that is expected. Transonic drag is. Well, that's why I use the autopilot in the Concorde. <laughs> okay, the autopilot's in charge of the trim. Darn it. I'm letting it be in charge of the trim. But, hopefully, I mean, I wonder how it would be in the actual Concorde. I mean, hopefully the autopilot's better at holding it steady through Mach 1 than that. That would be quite dramatic right there. Uh, you're overdoing it. You're overdoing it. The vertical speed setting was down here. You gotta get yourself into trouble if you go below Mach 1. The all pilot right around Mach 1 could do with some work here. This is the really sticky part. I don't know why the engine 3 now doesn't seem to have the afterburner on. Um... Uh, that seems wrong, doesn't it? No, that is not what. It, no, I did not expect that to pop up. Um, go back. Uh, go away. Uh, you you go away too. Hmm. Okay, well, there's a hot spot there for a GPS thing. But yeah, one of our engines is not doing afterburner. It really isn't. And I, I don't know if that's a random failure or whether uh, uh, that's just a setting something I've got wrong. Our, uh, our INS is totally uh, not right, but... Okay, I think we're close enough we could probably start climbing again. And we're gonna go to 55,000. Indicated airspeed in the upper left does not indicate the same thing as what we have on the airspeed indicator. I think we can climb faster. It's turning off and on the afterburner. Caution. Reheat counter over 12 minutes. Yeah. The 15 There's a 15-minute limit on the reheat, but we also have one reheater not working, so... Gotta try and climb a little bit slower and speed up here. Uh, well, lights just came on on their own. Uh, okay. I'm just gonna have it level off at 46,000 because we're having a little bit of trouble here. Is there any light to indicate why the third engine does not want to have the afterburner on? I don't see anything. Okay, uh, I'm gonna take it off of autopilot for a sec. Off. Caution. We are above the 15 minutes reheat limit. Yeah, that's one reason why I'm taking it off of autopilot. Uh, we've lost reheat on one, I think, as well. I think we've lost reheat on all engines. So that's interesting. Let me check the failures. Um, where are the failures? Eight hours per failure. 572 things that could fail. Let's just go through. Uh, engines, let's see. 
Afterburner 3 failed. Okay, so Afterburner 3 actually did fail. The others, I guess, just went past their limit and we can't use them? I'm not sure. So we actually had a random failure with the Afterburner 3. And I think I've got to abort this flight and find some place to land. So... I wonder if there's ever actually been a random afterburner failure on a Concorde. Well, without any afterburner, we seem to be able to hold Mach 1.12. Not exactly the Mach number we were looking for, but right now it's the Mach number we've got. But failures are working. And, you know, if you're gonna get a steady level airliner, you want to see those failures working. Oh wait, we've got some afterburners now. Looks like they're not totally gone. <laughs> Maybe they just needed to cool off or something. How much can we push them? We might as well try it. It'll at least burn off some of the fuel. Well, Mach 1.22, 36,000 feet. No afterburner necessary right here. Really wish the map let you zoomed out, zoom out more, because this is hardly sufficient for a Concorde. <laughs> I mean, of course we're not flying full speed right now, but yeah, we can cover quite a lot of ground. Unfortunately, this low overcast that we've got, and it is real world weather, uh, is blocking all sense of terrain. Uh, I don't have full of scenery in this area, so... It wouldn't be, you know, particularly special, it'd be just the regular default scenery, but still. Um, weird things are happening. I, I don't know what that visual, what's going on there. Huh. K-I-L-M, Wilmington. That sounds like a place I want to go. We will try to land at Wilmington. We are still too heavy, of course. I don't know how it's possible, though. I mean, our total fuel contents are 24 tons. So this is telling me that even after we expend all of our fuel, we'd still be too heavy to land, which doesn't make any sense. So I think this, uh, this status uh, is uh, probably wrong. Uh, that might be a problem with this current gross weight indicator. Let's see. I know it is ticking down. But... How is this possible? That even when we've expended all our fuel, we'd be too heavy to land. Yep, I don't know. That seems weird to me. Okay, descending to 10,000. And we will tell the flight engineer to trim for landing. Okay, I'm going to take it off autopilot. Okay, well, it's a little bit rainier right now, but I can see the runway. We're a little bit off, but I think we can manage this. Hopefully. If the thrust reversers are working. Sort of depends on whether my configuration, joystick configuration, is okay for them. Contact. Okay. I don't seem to have thrust reversers. do this with the Concorde every new time. Oh, Yeah, I'll have to check my thrust reverses. We did not have those. I went a bit far.
Okay, but we survived. And you know, if x plane wanted to kill me, it would have. Let me try and get back to the taxiway. So, we didn't end up where I wanted to because of the afterburner issue, but we ended up here at Wilmington. But anyway, Kolimata Concord seems to work just fine in x plane 11 with the upgrade. And so I'm happy for that. The thing about the Concorde is uh, the wonderful scenery in Flight Sim, of course, it doesn't really come into play that much because that's mostly low-level stuff and we go really, really fast and really, really high with Concorde. So the important thing is that the internal uh, details are good and the internal details of the Kolimata Concorde are good. So, yep. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.